we're a month into the baseball season and the Rangers are proving they are legitimate contenders. They went three out of four against the Yankees, are atop the AOS. I'm going to tell you all about why they're legit. All that on this episode of Locked on Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan since 2010, the founder and host for all five seasons of this Locked On Rangers podcast. Thank y'all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Subscribe on YouTube, where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. You can comment which of your f- favorite, which of your these 17 uh, wins for the Rangers in the first month were your favorite, or just just whoever your your player of the month for the Rangers in the month of April is. The Rangers are here. They are here to stay. They are a legitimately good team. They are 17 and 11 at heading into the month of May. 17 wins according to Texas Rangers PR is the tied for the second most in club history. 18 in 1998 was the most. They have done 17 wins in 2013, 2012 and 1989 and they have a plus 72 run differential plus 72 this team is not just beating teams they are walloping them including what they did in the finale against the yankees 15 to 2 started off with a first run or first inning grand slam by josh young his first career grand slam good for the rookie establishing himself as a rookie of the year candidate if not a favorite at this point the offense has scored 10 plus runs in half of the team's games so far the offense is incredible Adolis Garcia is amazing Daniel Lowe has really started to pick it up as of late Marcus Simeon has really carried the slack Jonah Heim is absolutely phenomenal if not one of the best catchers in baseball, probably the best catcher in the American League, absolutely deserves to get his first all-star nod. And the rest of this offense is really, really humming. I mean, the depth of this lineup is just absolutely outstanding. The Rangers don't have just one guy who is doing it for them. They have a whole number of guys stepping up, and they're they're all doing it without a lot of help. They're without Mitch Garver, without without Corey Seager, and without Jacob DeGrom. We'll get into the DeGrom news in the second segment of this show, but this Rangers lineup is incredibly deep. The frustration I had with the Robbie Grossman experiment, um, it, it's going well. Um, Robbie Grossman is, is you know, on a 12-game game hitting streak so I, I feel I'm feeling kind of stupid about poo-pooing Robbie Grossman when he had an 0 for 24 streak he's, he's more than making up for it his offense has picked right back up heading into Sunday's game he had an OPS of 734 which is just fine for your DH and you know in, in that uh, now 12 games that he's been on the, a tear he has been incredibly effective the Rangers have gotten contributions from so many different guys in the lineup Ezekiel Duran has been fantastic we'll get into him when we talk about what they're missing Corey Seager Travis Jankowski has been exceptional OPS has fallen all the way down below 800 at 790, but from a guy who wasn't going to make this roster coming out of spring training, the Rangers are getting fantastic production from him. Adolis Garcia is squashing all questions. He won American League Player of the Week in the final week of April because, uh, you know, actually, well, I guess the next to last week of e- April, basically on the strength of, of one game, which I don't ever think I've seen a player win a player of the week award on one game he did have a home run earlier in the week but we all know it was just because of that saturday absolute walloping that he lupped on those poor poor a's but this team is so good the starting pitching is stepping up the bullpen is not having to pitch in these key situations they're not having to be tested they're not having to throw a whole lot of innings because the rangers starters are stepping up just like martin perez did in this one the the offense was actually so good they didn't just knock nestor cortez out of the game they knocked their own starter martin perez out of this game martin was at around 70 pitches in this one through six innings with just one run allowed and he could he might have been able to go the distance the Rangers might have had back-to-back uh complete games from their starters but the Rangers offense was out there for around 30 minutes when they scored six runs in that in the bottom of that sixth inning to make it 14 to one at that point Martin Perez could not go back out there once the starters been out of the game for 30 minutes 
it's pretty much it's pretty much a done, done for the day for for those starters. But you know, if if that's what you got and you got a, a fourteen to two lead at that point, you think, okay, well, I guess we can, I guess we can get some guys in our pen some work, and that's what the Rangers did. They got a score was sending out Ian Kennedy. They got Cole Reagans on the mound, who looked absolutely fantastic in this one, pumping ninety eight in there with a pair of strikeouts and a perfect inning. He really needed that inning of work. It been a rough couple of outings for him. Yuri Rodriguez, who was called up. Uh, to replace John or J- Jacob Degrom on the IL, he gets in immediately, gets some action, gets rattled just a little bit, but gets out of the inning. Absolutely no stakes coming into a 14 to two game. The Rangers won. They won the series. They took three out of four. They have been beating good teams. It is not just the crappy teams who they've played. They 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 played a lot of crappy teams. They played the A's. They took two out of three against them. You would have liked to see them take all three, but it's fine. They took five out of six against the Royals who are a bad team. They took three out of three against the Phillies, two out of three against the defending world champion Houston Astros. They're five and one against teams that were in the World Series last year. And if you add in teams that were in the the final four, if you will, then that's what, eight and eight and two against teams that made the champ the league championship series. That's three out of four against the Yankees as well. The only game the Rangers lost was a two run game with you know, the, probably the best pitcher in the American League right now, and Garrett Cole on the mound. And that's it. They have had their stumbles. stumbles. They lost two out of three in Wrigley. Not a great series. They lost two out of three at home against the Orioles. That wasn't a great series for them. The Orioles were a good team. And then they lost three out of three in Cincinnati against this red team. But I, I was pumping the, pumping the gas that whole time I was that pumping this Rangers optimism gas that entire series yeah it was a one run loss a one run loss a two run walk off home run loss to a bad team but even good teams will have bad series it happens to literally every team it is such a ranger thing to be coming off of you know that week and a half of of greatness winning two out of three on the road against um, the astros and that sweep of the royals and then taking two out of three against the a's with an absolute just domination embarrassment of a butt kicking in that 18 to 3 game on that saturday and then go into cincinnati and say oh well there you go you, <laughs> you lose three games in heartbreaking frustrating hair tearing out fashion then you lose the first one of the yankees and rangers are on a four game losing streak and everyone says oh no well here comes the rangers they're not really a legitimately good team oh wow jacob Degrom leaves on friday's game uh, yeah they they got the win but they're not really a good team then nate Ivaldi comes out there with an absolute freaking gem of a complete game shutout on saturday the rangers just kick the teeth out of this yankees team that is a good team still this year And they look like one of the best teams in all of baseball. And they've been doing it without some of their best players. And they're going to have to continue to do it without some of their best players. But they've gotten some huge contributions from some guys that were not expected to do a whole lot coming into this season. Coming up, we're going to look at who those players are, what the timeline for their return is, and where we are at the Jacob deGrom, DefGrom rankings. But first, this episode is brought to you by Built Bar. If you're looking for a delicious snack, but you don't want all the sugar and calories, then you've got to try the best pro- tasting protein bar out there. It is built. You have got to try this. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste, I have got just the thing for you. Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so amazing, you won't think they're good for you. You have got to try them. What makes Built Bars so good? Well, for starters, they're all covered in 100% real chocolate. That is right, real chocolate. They come in all kinds of unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie and cookies and cream as well and now you don't have to wait for your to get a box of your built bars for years we've been telling you to go order built bars at built.com and now you can get them at your local walmart or sam's club while these specialty flavors at are still at built.com that's right head to your nearest walmart today pick yourself up a box in the pharmacy section grab a four bar box of cookies and cream double chocolate bar or coconut puff or if you're close to a sam's club run and grab a 13 bar box of our hit flavors brownie batter puff or churro puff You'll thank me later. This episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. It's so easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you and never take a moment to think about what you need from yourself. 
you know, but we all spend our, all of our time giving it can leave us really stretched thin or, or burned out. Therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. I've started therapy recently and taken a couple of mental health days. I really appreciate y'all being, um, being accommodating in that. And, you know, it's been a really, really great and helpful experience. So if you're thinking about trying therapy, then you should give better help a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist switch therapist at any time for no additional charge find more balance with better help visit betterhelp.com slash locked on mlb today to get 10 percent off your first month that's betterhelp h-e-l-p.com slash locked on mlb now this rangers team has been kicking the butts of everyone that's been in front of them and they've been doing it without their best players and the wild part is they haven't super needed them Corey seager has been gone for a while he hasn't played the last 17 games jacob de was just placed on the 15 day il on saturday with right elbow inflammation we already know that yuri rodriguez has come up in his stead to hang out in the bullpen pitch occasionally the rangers have a couple of off days in this upcoming week including monday may 1st as you listen to this and may the 4th be with you uh on thursday as well got a series against the diamondbacks then a long road trip ahead the rangers do already have the parts in their starting rotation to come up with um who's going to be starting yerry rodriguez by the way in case you were curious yerry rodriguez is not going to be starting in jacob grom's dead. that's just not going to happen it's almost assuredly going to be dane dunning the rangers haven't come out and said it just yet but it seems like that's going to be the case maybe it'll be cole reagan's but the rangers have two guys right there we knew with this rotation that they brought in there were a lot of pieces parts that have uh, a ext- extensive injury history. Jacob Grom is one of them. That was kind of the gamble. I talked about that and why it's worth the risk on Saturday's episode. If you haven't checked that one out, a very, very good show. Andrew Heaney, very extensive injury history. Nathan Evaldi even has his own long history history with injuries and John Gray as well. So, I mean, three out of five in this rotation kind of had some big old red flags. So I actually really kind of almost four, pretty, pretty much everybody in this rotation outside of Martin Perez had some injury concerns. But the reason that you go out and you buy three new starting pitchers, the Rangers had two pretty good starting pitchers last year and John Gray and Martin Perez. They brought Martin Perez back and they brought in three new starting pitchers. I thought they needed at least two probably three and there they go they got five grown adults in their rotation and everybody's stepping up nathan Iavoli pitched an absolute gem when the rangers needed it so desperately that day about an hour before the game the rangers put degrom on the il he is he's feeling good um he is confident that it's only going to be those 15 days so i i still i still think that i have to have us at defcrom defcrom three he is on the 15 day il and you know, he doesn't, there's no structural damage. There's, there's nothing like that. The Rangers are, are feeling all right about it. I know that any kind of elbow or elbow inflammation is, is scary. Um, DeGrom definitely wants to be out there, but the Rangers are playing it cautious. That is, that is the route you take with Jacob DeGrom, especially when you have a rotation full of dudes that are coming out there and absolutely shoving. I mean, your number five starter is Andrew Heaney. That that tells you where this rotation is. It is in a much, much better place. Everybody in the rotation has an ERA under four and a half. Heaney is the only one that's over four. I mean, Eovaldi, who had had some rough starts in the past, comes out and pitches the best game a Texas Ranger has pitched in a long time since the first complete game since Martin Perez's in Houston in May of last year. That was my favorite game of last year. This Eovaldi outing was absolutely incredible, and it was so incredibly necessary. The Rangers offense didn't do a whole lot. Just Ezekiel Duran, the only one who was scoring a two-run home run against the team who traded him for Joey Gallo. Um, Would have been really fun to have Joey Gallo also in this series, but at this point, the Rangers don't super need him either, as much as I would like Joey Gallo in this lineup, but... Ezekiel Duran has also been stepping up, and it is time to talk about how great Zeke Duran has been. He has become the everyday shortstop with Corey Seager out. He is going to be out for at least another couple of weeks. Mitch Garver hasn't played since April 8th. I mean, this team has been without two of its biggest bats, and with the lineup kind of struggling a little bit early on outside of, I mean, that first series, they were just absolutely unloading on the Phillies, but there was a little bit of a a downturn in that week where they played the Orioles and um, they played the Cubs and they lost two straight series and thought, okay, maybe this lineup isn't that great. Um, And then they started picking things back up, but Zeke Duran has been an absolute revelation. He's been 
pretty darn good at shortstop. And then in the series against his former team, he went six for six with a home run that was an absolute freaking missile. It was 430 plus feet, over 110 miles an hour off the bat. The guy is hitting 302 with an on base of 333 and an OPS of 777 with just one, yes, one walk this season. <laughs> this guy has been absolutely killing it. This is the thing that I have loved about his game ever since he was in the minors. This is a guy who is going to absolutely sting it to all fields. That is what Zeke Durant does. He does not walk a whole lot, but he hits the ball hard. He plays a bunch of different positions. He is very fast. He's very athletic. He's got a huge, huge arm. He is looking much better at shortstop every day than I thought he would. And in his last seven games, he's hitting 360 with an on base of 407 and slugging 520. The guy has been coming up big with multiple RBIs in the last couple games of this series. An RBI in every single game against the Yankees. I know it's not the most important stat in the world, but still, the guy has been coming up. He made the opening day roster. He very much impressed Bruce Bochy, and Bruce Bochy called him a ball player. I mean, that's... I mean, if some random person were to call someone a baseball player who was a baseball player, you'd think, okay, they're just pointing out the obvious, but if Bruce Bochy is calling you a ball player, that's a, that's a high compliment. It means you, this guy... This guy's got something that I really, really respect, and the Rangers saw it coming out of camp. I was worried that he wasn't going to make the opening day roster, and then when he wasn't getting every day at bats and he was struggling offensively to start the season because that's what will happen when you're not playing every day, I thought, okay, well, maybe maybe they're kind of stunning Zeke Duran's development. I thought that he would win the everyday job in left field. He didn't end up doing that out of camp, um, but then not that you would ever want a Corey Seager injury. You would literally never, ever, 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 ever wish an injury on Corey Seager or anybody, but the Rangers are making the most of it with Ezekiel Duran coming up huge offensively and showing the incredible depth of this lineup coming up. We're going to look at a little bit more into the rest of this rotation and name my player of the month and uh, also talk a little bit more about Josh Young and his campaign for American League Rookie of the Year. But first, this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. For Championship Ting, it is all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same thing when it comes to parts for your vehicle. Which part needs the, just the right fit? Um, so, you know, next time you need parts and accessories, head over to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to the My Garage and look for the green check to know if the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available U.S. customers, eligible items only, exclusions apply. Thank you all so much to the everydayers. Hopefully we'll have even more of you actually caring about this team and listening every single day to this podcast now that we have a good Texas Rangers team for literally the first time since I've been hoping, uh, since I have been hosting this podcast in five seasons. Um, if you are an everydayer, then you can check out the Rangers broadcast on the Sirius XM app, the SXM app. Go search Rangers and find the next Rangers game against the Diamondbacks on Tuesday. Going to be a fun, fun season series there as well but with enough with the suspense you're probably wondering price who who is your who is your player of the month there there's quite a few candidates to choose from i mean you could go with nathan eovaldi you could go with martin perez who um, lowered his era down under two and a half with this six innings of one run ball could go with jacob de Gram, who did make all of his starts still averaged over five innings um in all of his starts and looked absolutely incredible Sorry, I'm not going to go with Jacob deGrom. I could go with Marcus Simeon, who is the Rangers baseball reference war leader through one month of the season. But I'm going to go with Jonah freaking Heim. This guy has been absolutely incredible for the Texas Rangers this season. He has been the best catcher in the American League last year. He had an incredible first half of the season, was amazing, and then fell off a cliff last year when the season got on because he had to play 127 games, which was uh, more than was 45 games more than he had played the year before. He was the Rangers' everyday catcher, and he earned that role. 16 home runs was a career high for him last year, and through 23 games, he's already got five home runs, seven doubles, hitting 303 with an on base of 386, and slugging 592. That is a 974 OPS for a catcher. 
a switch hitting catcher who walks, who hits for average, who hits for power, and is a really good defensive catcher. He's in the top 8% of baseball when it comes to framing. He is in, well, he's around mediocre when it comes to pop time uh, to second base that has dropped down a few points. But if you look at all these expected numbers on baseball savant, um, the barrel percentage, the amount that he's striking out, um, the amount that he's chasing outside the zone, he's walking and slugging and hitting the ball freaking hard. All of those numbers are pretty much in the red. The guy does everything really well, except for, you know, throwing the ball super hard, which again, nobody's really throwing out runners a whole lot right now anyway. And he doesn't sprint very hard um, or very fast. He's in the 16th percentile there, but I mean, he's a catcher. Not everybody can be Pudge and be a catcher and also be fast, but Jonah Heim is doing everything the Rangers have asked of him. He is one of those trio of hitters that were not big free agent signees that were probably the biggest reason the Rangers are competing right now, the biggest reason the Rangers could turn around so quickly. The Rangers got Jonah Heim in a trade from the A's for Elvis Anders. They also got old K. Chris Davis. That didn't last super long, um, but Jonah Heim has been absolutely incredible for the Rangers this year. He was amazing for them last year. He was robbed of that all-star bid from his former teammate, Jose Trevino. And I don't think that Jose Trevino is, is going to be blocking him out for that many votes this year. I mean, there's going to be some Yankees fans that just vote for the Yankees no matter what, because that's what Yankees fans do. But the rest of baseball, it, it's time they see how good Jonah Heim is at this point. He has been probably the best Rangers hitter this season, bar none. I mean, Corey Seager is having that incredible start. Uh, he still only had one home run in the, what, how many games was it that he played? 11 games, which I, I think he would have figured that out. He had nine walks, seven strikeouts. But, I mean, Jonah Heim is, is doing it. 10 walks to 14 strikeouts um, heading into this most recent game. I think it's, those numbers have changed just a little bit. I'm, I'm looking at MLB.com, which updates the numbers immediately um, and recording this late at night when Baseball Reference has not yet updated its numbers uh, like I normally do. But he has been so incredibly good, so incredibly valuable for the Rangers with him. That trio, like I was saying, is him, Nathaniel Lowe, and Adoles Garcia. All of those were probably three of, if not maybe three of the best moves that John Daniels made in his tenure with the Rangers. I mean, those moves, plus drafting Josh Young, which looks like a phenomenal move right now, and also trading Joey Gallo for Ezekiel Duran and Josh Smith and Glenn Otto and Trevor Hover as well, who is putting up a pretty good walk rate in double A this year. Those were some really, really good moves after quite a few years of kind of just missing the mark and you know kind of wasting the the end of Beltre's career those those last couple of years were were a rough way the Rangers had some bad breaks go their way no more Mazzara was a once in a lifetime prospect that you know couldn't miss gonna hit 280 with 30 bombs be in the middle of your lineup and that didn't happen Jerickson Profar had you know freak injuries he was gonna be basically what Wander Franco is right now and uh injuries robbed him of that thankfully he's ended up making out a pretty decent career for for himself but the rangers have made some really really smart moves and they are really flourishing to the point where this rebuild isn't that fluky you could see the signs last year you could see adolis garcia coming in his own into his own you could see nathaniel lowe being one of the better hitters in all of baseball last year you could see jonah heim showing that you know first half stretch you're like okay this is a really really good catcher this is um a guy who is is doing well like this the smart move to sign martin perez who ended up being fantastic john gray was pretty good in his outings and so it's not just oh the rangers spent a bunch of money and that was it and this team does still have some holes. The bullpen is not as good as it's been and also not as bad as it's been, which is just a weird way to say it. They've not been tested very hard at all. I don't think Dane Dunning is going to keep a sub to ERA for the whole season, but Brock Burke is, is a legitimately good bullpen piece. Will Smith is a veteran, knows how to pitch. Jonathan Hernandez has got some really good stuff. And Jose LeClerc, for all the whining and moaning, he does still have an ERA under one. I know that it's frustrating, but he still has an ER under one. And I, I think we're going to see a little bit more of Josh Spores in some of these key situations because his stuff is really, really nasty. I think that this team has a lot of depth. We talked about the depth in the starting rotation, how you have Dane Dunning and Cole Reagans ready to step in at a moment's notice behind them. Maybe we'll see Cody Bradford. I hope we don't have to see Cody Bradford much this season as a starter because that means that two or Actually, I think that point, probably three of your starting pitchers are hurt. And hopefully the Rangers don't have to go there. But 
for now, this is a really good team. It is time to trust in this team. The Rangers have Bruce Bochy, who is kind of covering some of those holes. The, part of the reason the bullpen is performing so well is because Bruce Bochy is there. But they're also getting key contributions from Josh Young, who it is time to talk about him as a Rookie of the Year candidate in the American League. He has been fan fantastic so far this season he leads american league rookies in home runs with six he leads them with doubles with five he leads them with hits in 20 with 27 of them he is up there in the top uh three i believe in ops he is at 824 he is behind logan ohapi who is going to fall out of the uh contenders campaign because or uh, the um qualified hitters because unfortunately he suffered an injury um it's a shame for him he's having a really good season for the, the angels um he's also just a little bit behind masataka yoshida who is technically a rookie um for the boston red sox signing out of japan this past year but i feel like if you're you know 29 years old and you've had I think over a decade of professional experience, you don't really get to qualify as a rookie. I mean, you kind of do. And I think that's how actually, no, you Darvish didn't even win rookie of the year, his rookie year, because there was a guy named Mike Trout that kind of um, took that away from him, but he is outperforming the number one overall prospect in all of baseball. According to MLB pipeline, Gunnar Henderson, who's not having the best start to his season with the Baltimore Orioles. He is outperforming, uh, star shortstop for the New York Yankees, Anthony Volpe, who's, who's having a good season in his own right. And Corey Jolks is getting a lot of love in Houston for being less good than Josh Young. It is time to appreciate Josh Young. He, I said it from the beginning of this year that this was a guy who could be, should be leading that rookie of the year race, at least early on. He is a lot older for rookie. He probably should have been up a little while ago. He is 25 years old. He probably could have been handling the big leagues a couple years ago. Injuries have robbed him of that, not anything of his own performance, but he is absolutely performing like one of the best rookie, one of the best rookies in all of baseball. Over the last seven games, he has been just laying the wood, hitting bombs, hitting three home runs in his last seven games, a 696 OPS. The walks have been a little bit of a struggle for him. He had some really, really good at-bats in this game, a multi-hit game, a multi-extra uh, base hit game, and a really impressive bases loaded walk. I believe that was a, of the six, seven pitch variety. Also a long at bat in the opposite field home run. I have given baseball prospectus a lot of crap for dropping him 70 spots to 100 overall. Actually, maybe it wasn't quite 70. Maybe it was just 67. I think he was in the 30s last year of their top 100. This year, they put him at 100 after not absolutely crushing it last year in the big leagues in a what 25 ish game sample size right now he's got 25 games under his belt um or heading into this game today and at that point he had a 769 ops which was pretty nice and now is a little bit nicer yeah exactly um heading into actually no, as up to now now okay as i'm recording this of course that's when baseball prospectus updates their numbers anyway Last year, through 26 games, he had a 654 OPS, five home runs, four doubles, and a triple, hitting 204, 235, 418. It, it was fine. He was probably a little hurt, and he was probably not quite ready for the big leagues, but, you know, he came up and he performed. He performed well. And this year, through 26 games, he's got six home runs, five doubles, a slash line of 270, 324, and five those walks are going to be coming. He's got seven walks this year as opposed to four walks last year. The walk rate will definitely trend up. I think that's just a matter of, I don't know, not getting some calls and just not being in the right situation. And, you know, he's displaying the power numbers now. I think he's going to get fewer strikes to hit. But this is a very, very complete hitter, an important part of this Rangers lineup. There was some thought about when when Adoles Garcia was struggling. Oh, maybe, maybe it's time for Josh Young to be in the... And the four hole. Nah, he's pretty good in that five hole. And you have Jonah Heim as your number six hole hitter. And once you get Corey Seager back, that one through six is as deep as any lineup in all of baseball. I thought the Rangers were just going to have, you know, top three that was as deep as anyone in baseball. Now they're going legitimately six deep with absolutely fantastic hitters. Then you throw Robbie Grossman hitting seventh and doing very, very well lately. And that is the kind of lineup that you can get behind and say, okay, this is dominant. Put in Zeke Duran hitting eighth if he keeps up doing things like this and starts walking it better than a, what, one-ish percent rate that he's doing right now, which I think he will. Um, not going to be 
it's not going to be like a 10% walk rate or anything. It's, it's going to be a little bit better than it, than it is right now, especially if he, he keeps hitting 430 foot taters. But this is a good team. It is time to trust it. I know you've been burned by the range before. So have I. This is a much better team than we've seen in the past. It's probably going to get harder. They're probably not going to be 17 and 11 um, every 28 games throughout the rest of the season. But this is a good team. It is time to believe. It is time the rest of the league was put on notice that the Texas Rangers are freaking legit. That's going to do it for this episode. I'll be back tomorrow looking a little bit ahead at this Arizona series, looking a little bit more closely at why this team has been so freaking good and what the month of May has in store for your Texas Rangers. That's going to do it for today's show. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy first place Texas Rangers baseball.